Football is a violent sport, which is what makes evaluating players still in high school so difficult. With how prevalent injuries are on all levels, it's tough to predict who will actually make it to the NFL. That's what makes things like the USA Today All-USA High School football team so intriguing. These young men were among the best of the best, but many of them never found NFL greatness. Today, we're taking a look back at the 1989 USA Today All-USA team and seeing what happened to all 24 players, starting with the offense. Andre Hastings, wide receiver. The USA Today Offensive Player of the Year went to Georgia to play college ball. His first season was relatively average with 333 yards and three touchdowns, but he pulled in nearly 50 balls for 683 yards and five TDs the next season to lead the team. His third and final year was even better, totaling 52 catches for 860 yards and five touchdowns. Hastings was then selected in the third round of the 93 draft by the Steelers. The six foot one wideout played for Pittsburgh for four seasons, starting 18 of his 54 games and pulling in 143 catches for 1,566 yards and nine touchdowns. In a losing effort, Hastings grabbed 10 catches for 98 yards in Super Bowl 30. He joined New Orleans in 97 and played there for three seasons, starting most of his games and pulling in 123 catches for 1,741 yards and nine more TDs. He signed with Tampa Bay in 2000, but accumulated no stats while playing in just three games. Since wrapping up his playing career, Hastings has mostly been going by his middle name Orlando and runs a dog training business in Arizona as of 2020. Chris Winky, quarterback. Winky was more than just a star quarterback in high school. He also played first base for his baseball team and captained his hockey squad. He would sign with Florida State to play football, but the All-State baseball player was picked in the second round of the 1990 MLB draft and decided to try his hand at pro ball. He reached AAA ball in 95, putting up 10 homers and 41 RBIs while hitting 226, but decided to switch back to football at Florida State. The 25-year-old freshman joined the Seminoles team in 97, becoming a full-time starter in 98. That year, Winky led FSU to a 9-1 record and the number two ranking in the country. However, he picked up a neck injury in a game against Virginia, which ended his season a few games early. In 99, he returned with a vengeance, leading the Knolls to an undefeated season, ending in a national championship winning victory against Michael Vick's Virginia Tech Hokies. In 2000, he led the nation in passing yards with 4,167 while tossing 33 TDs and winning the Heisman Trophy. Unfortunately for Florida State, things didn't end as well as the team lost to Oklahoma in the Orange Bowl, losing their chance at back-to-back -back national titles. Winky headed to the 2001 NFL Draft where the Panthers selected him in the fourth round largely because of his age. Winky played in 15 games during his rookie year, going 1-14 and, and tossing 8 more interceptions than touchdowns. Winky then became a career backup, playing through 2007, but only seeing action in 14 more games. After retirement, he'd go work in marketing for several years and open up a quarterback academy until the Rams signed him to be the quarterback's coach in 2015. He's since worked on several different staffs and works as the assistant head coach at Georgia Tech as of 2024. Calvin Jones, running back. Jones grew up in Omaha, so it wasn't a big surprise when the running back signed with Nebraska to play his college ball. During his three years with the Cornhuskers, he never rushed for fewer than 900 yards and 12 touchdowns. His best season came in 92 when he ran for 1,210 yards and 14 TDs, adding 162 yards and another touchdown as a receiver. Remember, he was splitting carries with Derrick Brown, so he was averaging over seven yards per carry to hit those numbers. That said, he could be a bell cow back at times, rushing for 294 yards and six touchdowns on 27 carries in a 91 game against Kansas. By the time he moved on to the next level, Jones was a three-time All-Big 8 player, one-time All-American, and the 92 Big 8 Offensive Player of the Year. In the 94 draft, the Raiders selected him in the third round. He played in 15 games with the team, rushing for 112 yards before signing with Green Bay in 96. He appeared in one game, accumulating no stats, but did technically win a Super Bowl that year. Unfortunately, Jones was out of football the next year, and a few bad financial decisions left him nearly broke. The former collegiate star fell into drugs and alcohol for the next several years before getting his life back on track in 2002. In 2011, he opened a company called Forever a Husker, a lifestyle brand for Nebraska fans, but it fell through when a new AD took over for the school. He would then start to work at a car dealership where he was still working as of 2019. Robert Smith, running back. 
Smith was an elite prep running back, becoming the first player to win Ohio's Mr. Football twice during high school. As a junior, he ran for 1,564 yards, and he improved to 2,042 yards and 31 TDs as a senior. He was also a track star, running a 10.68 in the 100 meters and a 21.10 in the 200. He decided to attend Ohio State for college ball and was an instant success, rushing for 1,064 yards and seven touchdowns during his first season. However, Smith decided to skip the 91 season and switch to a track and field scholarship. He ran a 10.24 in the 100 for the Buckeyes before deciding to switch back to football in 92. Smith did consider transferring to USC or Stanford, but ended up sticking with Ohio State. He led the team in rushing, but only ran for 707 yards because he missed two games. The All Big Ten back then went to the 93 NFL Draft, where the Vikings selected him with the 21st pick. Smith struggled with injuries early in his career, but continued to improve until having his breakout season in 97, when he ran for 1,266 yards and 6 TDs. In 98, he became part of one of the best offenses in NFL history, making his first Pro Bowl in the process. His best season came in 2000 when Smith rushed for 1,521 yards and six touchdowns to make another Pro Bowl. He also made the All-Pro team that year, but decided to retire after the season despite being at the top of his game. Smith wanted to pursue a career in medicine and protect himself from future serious injuries. Since leaving the game behind, he's done quite a bit of work in broadcasting with ESPN, Fox, and the NFL Network. Ricky Powers, running back. Powers was another standout back in Ohio, rushing for over 2,000 yards as a senior with 19 TDs. He then played at Michigan, splitting carries with John Vaughn as a freshman and Tyrone Wheatley later in his career. He only started one game as a freshman, but ran for 636 yards and four touchdowns. As a sophomore, Power started nearly every game, rushing for 1,187 yards and nine TDs to make the All Big Ten team. However, Wheatley started a breakout in 92 and Powers' carries fell off quite a bit. He played for two more years, wrapping up his career with 2,371 yards and 18 TDs for the Wolverines. Powers went undrafted in 94 before signing with Detroit as a free agent. He was waived before the season and signed to the Broncos practice squad. He stuck around until 95 when he was upgraded to the main roster, playing in three games and posting 51 yards on 14 carries. His NFL career was over after he was cut when the Browns moved to Baltimore and Powers spent a few seasons playing in several minor leagues. In 2007, Powers took over as the head coach at his alma mater in Akron. He coached the team for 14 seasons, compiling an 82-61 and 61 record before stepping down in 2021. Matt Neenan, Offensive Line Neenan went on to attend Syracuse for college ball, but he didn't play too much. In an email he sent to the Orange's athletic director in 2008, Neenan says himself that he, quote, ended up having a mediocre career at SU due to a knee injury that I suffered from a very stupid off-the-field event. Because of that injury, Nina never played professionally, instead going into real estate. As of 2024, he's been working in that field for at least 14 years. Aaron Taylor, Offensive Line Taylor headed to Notre Dame for college ball and quickly became a standout lineman. During his time with the Fighting Irish, he was a two-time All-American and won the Lombardi Award in 1993. Taylor was then selected with the 16th pick in the 94 draft by the Packers. With Green Bay, he won a starting job, but was dealt several injuries. He played in two Super Bowls with the team, winning a title in 96. In 98, he signed a big contract with the Chargers, but knee injuries continued to plague Taylor, and he retired for the 99 season after playing in 75 career games. He then jumped into broadcasting, working for ABC and CBS as a football analyst, while also covering the World's Strongest Man competition for CBS. His wife, Lena, is also a former pro player as she played professional volleyball. Mike McGlynn, Offensive Line McGlynn also went to Notre Dame to play college ball. He was mostly a depth option, but is listed as a starter in 1994. After wrapping up his college career, McGlynn has been working in various positions related to his faith. In 2013, he created a company called Sistine Films, which is focused on creating projects for various ministries. John Richard, Offensive Line there's not too much info out there on Richard. Looking through the Texas A&M yearbooks, I verified that he was with the team through the 1993 season, but it doesn't look like he played much. Since then, he's fallen out of the public eye. Steve Roberts, Offensive Line Roberts signed with the Georgia Bulldogs for college ball. The guard was a four-year starter, making the All-SEC second team in 1994. He didn't play pro ball, instead becoming a Parks and Rec professional. In 2019, he was working as the Parks and Rec director in Kennesaw after spending 15 years working in Dalton, Georgia. 
His son Jake played football at Kennesaw State during the mid-2010s, while his daughter Carson played on the golf team at North Georgia. Kyle Brady, wide receiver. Brady was a standout athlete in football, basketball, and baseball. Despite making the team as a wide receiver, Brady won the Bobby Dodd Award as a high school senior, which is given to the nation's best offensive lineman. He would attend Penn State for college ball, switching to tight end to take advantage of his blocking ability. Over his four-year career, Brady caught 76 passes for 940 yards and nine touchdowns, making the All-Big Ten team twice and the All-American team in 1994. After the season, Brady was selected with the ninth pick in the 95 draft by the Jets. Fans in attendance were pretty annoyed as they wanted New York to pick Warren Sapp. While Brady proved to be a very solid NFL player, it's fair to say that the fans were correct in their desires. Brady played for the Jets for four seasons, totaling 93 catches for 949 yards and 10 TDs. In 99, he signed with Jacksonville, where he'd spend the next eight years. He never made a Pro Bowl roster, but did compile 241 catches for 2,500 yards and 13 TDs, while also being known as one of the best blockers at his position. In 2007, he signed up with the Patriots for one season before retiring after the team loss of the Giants in the Super Bowl. Brady then did some broadcast work for NFL Europe and the Big Ten Network before becoming a financial advisor in 2009. He then went to law school, passing the bar in 2013. As of 2024, he was working in law to help NFL players learn to better manage their money. Marty Simpson, kicker. This is kind of a fun one. Simpson set several South Carolina state records as a high school kicker, including booting a 61-yard field goal. He decided to sign with the Gamecocks and keep it local for college ball. Simpson started as a kicker for the team, making 28 of his 32 extra points and 6 of his 13 field goals as a freshman. The next year, he added punting duties, averaging 38.5 yards per punt over 79 punts and making 12 of his 21 field goals. He became South Carolina's full-time punter in 93 before largely losing both kicking jobs in 94 as Reed Morton and Derwin Jeffcoat took over. However, he did score the first six points in South Carolina's SEC history, so you'll never take that from him. Simpson then started up a career as a stand-up comedian while working as a coach at a South Carolina high school. As of 2024, he's working as a touring stand-up comic around the country. And now for the defense. Oliver Gibson, linebacker. Gibson was the third of four members from this class to attend Notre Dame. A linebacker in high school, Gibson bulked up and played on the defensive line for the Fighting Irish. He was also technically a two-sport star as he suited up for the basketball team for seven games as a freshman, averaging just over a point a game. That said, he made his career on the gridiron and the Steelers elected Gibson in the fourth round of the 95 NFL Draft. While he didn't start for Pittsburgh, he was consistently featured in the line's rotation, totaling 42 tackles and 5.5 sacks over four years. Then Gibson signed with the Bengals and became a starter. He played for five more seasons, adding 201 tackles, 12 sacks, and one interception before retiring in 2003. Since then, he's done some broadcast work, but is mostly focused on becoming a high school coach back in Illinois. Reuben Brown, defensive line. Brown made his team on the defensive line, but he transitioned to offensive line while playing at Pitt. He made the All Big East team for three straight seasons, and the Bills selected him 14th overall in the 95 draft. He played in Buffalo for nine years, making the Pro Bowl roster for eight straight seasons from 96 to 2003. During that time, he also made the All Pro team four times. In 2004, he signed with Chicago, playing four more seasons, including one last Pro Bowl nod in 2006. Brown then became a free agent after the 2007 season and spent the next year out of football before officially retiring in 2009. Since then, he's entered the broadcast world. Bernard Williams, defensive line. Similar to Gibson, Williams was one of four players from this squad to play for the Georgia Bulldogs. Just like Brown, the 6'8 Williams made the team as a defensive lineman, but would switch to offensive tackle during his college career. In 1993, he was named to the first team All-SEC and first team All-American teams before heading to the NFL. The Eagles picked him with the 14th pick in the 94 draft. Williams started all 16 games as a rookie, making the all-rookie squad. However, the big man was suspended for the first six games of his sophomore season for smoking marijuana. He returned to practice on October 6th, but was not added to the active roster and was suspended again on October 23rd for a second substance abuse violation. Williams could have applied to be reinstated in 96, but he never filled out the paperwork. It's worth noting that he had been going through quite a bit at the time. 
his mother died of breast cancer in 96, and his aunt was sentenced to life in prison on drug charges that year, though those charges were eventually commuted in 2018. After leaving the NFL, Williams played in the Canadian Football League, the XFL, Arena League, and back in the CFL again between 2000 and 2006. However, since he'd technically never been waived by the Eagles, he was officially still on the reserve slash suspended list until Philly finally waived him in 2023. After leaving the game behind, Williams became a high school football coach and mentored his nephew Eric Berry, who became a three-time All-Pro selection and five-time Pro Bowler. As of 2023, he was studying to get a psychology degree while working as an Amazon driver, volunteering as a firefighter, and restoring old cars. Mitch Davis, Defensive Line Davis was the fourth player to join Georgia. The outside linebacker had a solid career at the Bulldogs, totaling 241 tackles, 37.5 sacks, and three fumble recoveries over his four years. He made the All-SEC team during both of his final two seasons, setting the then school record for sacks in a season with 13 as a senior. When he left school, he was third all-time in school history in the stat and is still in fifth place as of 2024. Davis was selected in the fourth round by the Falcons in the 94 draft, but doesn't appear to have played in an NFL game. He reportedly spent a few years on practice squads before going back to school, getting his degree, and fading into obscurity in the decades since. Brian Hamilton, Defensive Line Hamilton is that fourth Notre Dame player I mentioned. He played on the defensive line for four years, notably returning a fumble for a touchdown for the only score of his career as a senior. He went undrafted but signed with the Falcons as a free agent. Unfortunately, he didn't make the final cuts and moved to Arizona to start his career working in IT. Athletics runs deep in the Hamilton family as his daughter Amaya played college basketball at Duquesne, and his son Donovan is a freshman wide receiver at Purdue as of 2024. Tasha Williams, defensive line. First of all, apologies if I have a mispronunciation there. I couldn't find a very good source for this one. Okay, so I know I said Davis was the fourth and final Georgia Bulldog on this list, but that's technically not true. Williams signed with Georgia out of high school and spent some time at the school, but never played a snap. He then transferred to Northern Colorado, where he switched to the offensive line and helped the team to back-to-back D2 national titles in 96 and 97. While he went undrafted because he'd been playing at a lower level and tore his ACL during his senior season, he did sign with the Saints as a rookie free agent in 97. He seems to have made a few practice rosters and spent a year playing for the Berlin Thunder before leaving the game behind in 2000. He then got into coaching and teaching the high school level, where he's still working as of 2024. Marvin Jones, Linebacker Jones played for Bobby Bowden at Florida State and was an instant star. As a freshman, he was a third-team All-American. He upped that to first team in his second season, but saved his best for 92. He was a unanimous first-team All-American and won the Sporting News College Football Player of the Year, the Jack Lambert Trophy, the Lombardi Award, and the Buckus Award. He also finished fourth in Heisman voting that season, the only defensive player in the top six. Jones was selected by the Jets with the fourth pick in the 93 draft and played his entire career with New York. Shade Tree wasn't quite as successful from a hardware standpoint during his NFL career, but he did rack up 1,016 tackles, 10 forced fumbles, 5 interceptions, and 9 sacks, so he was definitely a solid get for the Jets. Since leaving his playing career behind, Jones has had several coaching jobs in the Arena League, Indoor League, and a few other smaller leagues. His son Marvin Jones Jr. started his college career at Georgia before transferring to his dad's alma mater. He's playing defensive line for the Seminoles in 2024. Bruce Walker, linebacker. Walker made the team as a linebacker, but gained some weight before his freshman season and moved to the defensive line. When playing, Walker was solid for UCLA, winning Defensive Freshman of the Year and leading the team in sacks in 92. However, he was suspended for the entire 1993 season after pleading no contest to one felony account of receiving stolen property. Eventually, he was selected in the second round of the 94 draft by the Eagles, but he was released before the season started. Walker was picked up by the Patriots as a free agent and spent two years playing there, starting five games and racking up 18 total tackles. After his second season in New England, Walker engaged in one of the wildest stories I've read in writing these. The big man incurred a stab wound in his chest, which he claimed happened when he and a friend were throwing a steak knife at each other in the grocery store parking lot. It wasn't a fight or anything, they were just tossing knives at each other and Walker missed the catch. He then spent a few seasons playing for the Frankfurt Galaxy, making the World Bowl game in 98. Walker then spent two years on the Chargers offseason team, but never made the final roster after picking up several injuries. Othello Henderson, defensive back. 
Henderson also played his college ball at UCLA. The DB had a solid Bruins career, but nowadays he's mostly known for a 2010 reveal that he and several other UCLA players, including Walker, had taken money from a man hoping to work as their agent when the players made it to the NFL. Henderson started taking money as a sophomore and went to the NFL after making second team pack 10 in 92. He was selected by the Saints in the seventh round. Henderson was a rotation player for two years, grabbing 24 total tackles and two fumble recoveries for injuries forced him to retire. Henderson has since been working as an educational speaker with the National Collegiate Scouting Association, trying to help future players navigate their path to the pros or a career outside of football. Larry Kennedy, defensive back. Kennedy kept it local and played his college ball at Florida University. Over his four years as a Gator, Kennedy picked off six passes, returning one for a touchdown. He was also a big contributor as a returner, averaging 22 yards per kick return in 33 attempts. Kennedy did also do some spot duty wide out from time to time before wrapping up his college career. He then played for a season in the World League of American Football with the Ryan Fire in 96 and spent the 97 season in the Arena League. Since hanging him up, Kennedy has spent the last few decades working as a rep and then account manager for Riddell, the famous football helmet manufacturer. Willie Guy, defensive back. Guy played all over the field at East High School, spending time at quarterback, running back, defensive back, kicker, punter, and returning kicks. He also won the Memphis City Championship in the long jump and played guard when East won a state title during his sophomore season. Guy was an all-around athlete, but it took some time for him to get on the field at Iowa because he had to get his grades in order. When he finally suited up for the Hawkeyes, he stuck at wide receiver, pulling in 36 catches for 567 yards and three TDs during his career. Guy also returned a handful of punts and kicks and even has one career pass completion for 45 yards. After finishing up his career in 95, he settled down in Grand Rapids and started a career in coaching in several different sports, including coaching his daughter Avery before she signed to play softball at Iowa in 2020. His son Willie played college basketball at North Dakota State and Angelo State. Mike Thomas, punter. Thomas made the USA team as a punter, but he played quarterback during his time at North Carolina University. It took Thomas a bit to get on campus because he didn't have the SAT scores to become eligible right away. Plus, Thomas did spend a bit of time playing minor league baseball, but never got past A-plus ball. When he did get to the gridiron, he threw seven passes in garbage time during his first season before becoming the primary backup behind Jason Stanisek until 95. That season, he took over and led the team to a 7-5 record. Of course, Thomas threw 19 interceptions to only 10 TDs, but he threw for 2,436 yards and added a rushing touchdown. Over his four-year career, Thomas racked up 4,368 yards, 22 TDs, and 28 INTs. Thomas also punted for the Tar Heels, though his kicks fell to just 14 when he became the starting QB. He averaged 40 yards per punt over 148 kicks. I found a 2023 article saying he'd been inducted into his high school's Hall of Fame, but it did not say what he's been up to, so if you know more, share it below.